Joining me now is Editor-in-Chief, Salon.com, Joan Walsh, and former Republican Congressman Colorado, Tom Tancredo. Uh, before we get our discussion going, I want to play this sound cut from Robert Gibbs, uh, a Communications Director of the White House. This was his response today to Mr. Cheney's uh, appearance at the big banquet last night. It's a curious comment given, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that the Vice President was for seven years uh, not focused on Afghanistan. What Vice President Cheney calls dithering, President Obama calls his solemn responsibility uh, to the men and women in uniform and to the American public. I think we've all seen what happens when somebody doesn't take that responsibility seriously. Mr. Tancredo, is uh, the Vice President correct? What should the President of the United States do on Afghanistan? Indecision is probably one of the worst things that you can have evidenced in the, in the persona of a commander in chief, and that's exactly what we got, and that's exactly what he was pointing out. What you know, remember, comprehensive strategy. That was what they used. That was the term they used to describe the policy that they adopted in March. It happened to be, by the way, the Bush policy. Now we we find that out today, even though, of course, Rahm Emanuel said that that didn't wasn't true. In fact, it was the Bush policy. It was passed on to them in the transition. They accepted. It and, and pronounced it the, the comprehensive policy strategy in the Well, in Tom, March. how did the. Now, how did, six Tom, months how did, later, Tom, six okay, months later, I got you. six I, months later, I hear what you're no saying, longer, but how did this. No policy? How did the situation in Afghanistan deteriorate, Tom? I mean, come on. Obama got elected. It was well, a mess over there. I mean, does, does the, the Bush administration do everything right in Afghanistan? Well, listen, you, things change on the ground. Oh. It's absolutely true. But, but what, what you do is you give your commanders on the ground the responsibility to implement the strategy you say you've adopted. All right, That's exactly Walsh, what they were doing. That's what McChrystal said. We need think, more troops. That was his responsibility. Okay. May and I they are talk? disregarding it. All right, go ahead, Joan. What about this? I think it's ridiculous. I think the vice president is an expert in dithering. That's why he's talking about dithering. Because they dithered for seven years in Afghanistan and let the Taliban come back and let an insurgent unrelated to the Taliban spring up because we took our eye off the ball and we went into Iraq for an unnecessary war. So this is what President Obama inherited. As to the question of whether he simply implemented the Bush-Cheney strategy, that is ridiculous. If they, if they had a strategy, why didn't they implement it? There, were, there was a troop increase request sitting on the president's desk when he came in. It had been sitting there for eight months. Why didn't Mr. Cheney come out of his bunker Tom, uh, and send the troops that were Request it. Why, why didn't why why was it sitting on the desk for eight months, Tom? Well, I can't tell you what they were talking about at that time. All I can tell you about is that now there is general agreement that, in fact, when the transition team was in effect, when they were transferring power to uh, the Obama administration, they set they gave him a very very comprehensive policy to to follow. He then looked at it. He looked at it for a period of time, and in March, essentially adopted it. It was the plan that the Bush team gave to him. Well, now, then they should I'm have saying, implemented it two years ago. Decision, this is ridiculous. Once they make that decision, well, hey, listen, all they're telling him is, here are your options. You take it. He, he did take it. He accepted the policy. Now he's saying, not sure. I'm, I don't know where to go. Well, the conditions in the country have changed. He accepted the policy. He put in an additional 21,000 troops. He did not accept you know, the whole policy. You know what policy. I think the president needs? I think the president needs a war czar. Somebody he can I pass off this decision to. I think that's to. disrespectful you know, and ridiculous. You know, because he can't make it himself, evidently. That's I mean, disrespectful to the president, Just and it's ridiculous. Just because you say it doesn't make it that way. Well, it is ridiculous. You know, when and when it, you keep saying it that way, well, he's that, our then commander it makes everything in you chief. say sound he's ridiculous. He's our commander that's in the only chief. Thing, that's the only argument that you can use. He's Joan, our commander Joan, in let me chief. Ask you sound ridiculous. Okay, no, hold on. I mean, it's crazy to just keep using that as an argument. All right, Tom. Joan, I want to ask you about the election. Obviously, the election has had something to do with all of this with the strategy, but now the White House has said that they want a partner going in. How does that change the dynamic? Of course it changes the dynamic enormously. He does not know who he's partnering with yet. There is going to be a runoff, and we have no reason to even trust or feel confidence in the result of the runoff. We have to cross our fingers and hope that there's a clear victor. So for that reason alone, the president needs to pause before implementing any strategy. And for the vice president to say anyone is afraid when he spent his entire vice presidency in a secret bunker, when he had five deferments from Vietnam because he had other priorities. That's ridiculous. For him 
Ridiculous. to be saying anybody <laughs> is truth, afraid <laughs> when, when he's the coward who sent other people's children into war to coward. die oh in Iraq is just is just absurd. All right. Joan he Walsh, Tom Tancredo, appreciate your time tonight. Thanks so much. Uh, we will continue the discussion later on. All right. Now, let me also bring in former CIA officer Jack Rice on this and uh, WTKK radio talk show host Michael Graham is with us tonight. Uh, Glad to be here. You bet. Good to have you with us. Jack, what's the call by the president? Whose fault is it at this point that Afghanistan is where it is? How much responsibility does uh, President Obama have to bear on this for what has happened in the last eight, nine months? Come on, Afghanistan was a disaster before he took office. And I don't give much credibility to Vice President Cheney. Let's face it, I have about as much trust in him here as I would having him teach a gun safety class. So under those circumstances, what's the point? <laughs> there is no credibility from this guy. What's the right call, Mr. Graham? What do you think? Well, I think this right call isn't talking about dictating Vietnam problem when you're talking about guys getting shot at right now. I love the fact that we have a commander in chief who's un unable to command. Hey, chief, you got the troops on the ground in Afghanistan. All they need is a strategy. It is hilarious so watching the president. Is, so, admit, Michael, you're. No strategy. Michael, are you. So, okay, they're shooting Michael, today. wait a minute. They're not waiting until next Thursday. All right, well, Michael, you're, you're saying that the election really shouldn't matter. We should just throw troops in there right now and have at it. Are you saying that if the wrong guy wins, Abdullah, Abdullah, or Karzai, that we're going to pull our troops out based on who wins the election? No, then what the hell no, are we doing? No, no, I'm asking no, you no. what you want the president to do. We've got all these right-wing experts running around talking about what the problem is, but they sure as hell couldn't solve the problem for eight years under Bush. So what do you want President Obama to do? Well, actually, we had a successful election in Afghanistan under President Bush, and the reason why the Taliban came back and the Al Qaeda, excuse me, came back to Afghanistan is because we kicked their asses out of Iraq, and that's when the problem started. Okay, you, you still excuse haven't answered answer the question. You Iraq. still haven't answered the question. You're you're ripping on President Obama for no strategy, but you can't tell us what you want him to do. Well, well first of all, my 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 answer is either pick counterinsurgency or counterterrorism. He hired a guy, McChrystal, McChrystal, who loves counterterrorism, said, "Nope, this case is counterinsurgency. Listen to your general." But can I point something out? And Ed, no one's shocking, buddy. I'm not president of the United States. I didn't spend a year running for president and then show up in January and go, Afghan who? What? Huh? Come on. He has no strategy now. He had time to go beg for the Olympics for his hometown. And he doesn't have time to re I was in Cape Cod when he should have been reading the report from McChrystal and refused to do it. All right, Jack Rice, I want you so to you counter this. What, what are your thoughts on is the, is the president being too slow in making a decision on Afghanistan? Is there room mm -hmm. for criticism here? not even close under the circumstances and by the way Ed you're absolutely right when it comes to the question of the election if what we have seen here is a third of the votes a full third were apparently fraudulent you see an incompetent regime that very well could be illegitimate you tie those two things together that means that the Americans are doing one of two things they're either supporting an illegitimate regime that's one option the other option is that they're simply invading on behalf of America either way that's a disaster uh, all right. and to simply so say they came in from Iraq Michael Graham ridiculous. I want to ask you no, I just, it, I just want to you know, I want to ask him. Do, no, do no, no, I'm, I'm asking the, the question here. Election. Hang on here, Michael. I'm Hang serious. On. I, I want to go to this now. If uh, Dick Cheney keeps going out, is he hurting the party talking like this? He's been doing it for months on end. Uh, the Republicans are now at 20%. Only 20% of the American people say that they want to be identified as Republicans right now. How is this a good strategy? <laughs> well, I think, the, I, I, th I think the more that anybody articulates the obvious common sense of having commander-in-chief who commands, you're going to win. Dick Cheney, this is his arena. He's not out talking about uh, social policy. He's talking about foreign policy. It's his bailiwick. Really? It's gone really, really well in Afghanistan so far. Those first seven years, no, fantastic. Great work. Well, actually, if you compare it to what we've had the last ten, nine months, it was great work. Now, the fact that things changed on the ground because of our success in Iraq is one thing, but I still don't understand this point. You're saying that if Abdullah, Abdullah, or Karzai, one of the wrong guys win, we're going to get out? We're going to leave? Is that why you're saying the elections are determinate? Why wouldn't we have a policy based on America's interests in the region? I don't understand. Because well, the first, only way we can have a legitimate effort that's in there, if we're supporting the government that's in power, if they're seen as illegitimate by the people of Afghanistan, if you're talking about insurgencies and you want to go down this path, right. Right. Fine. If we're going to support an insurgency, if we're going to support the people to stop an insurgency, if we're right. ever seen as incompetent and illegitimate, we cannot win. So, By the way, so you're those saying are that, so, words. So, so if, so if Karzai wins and he wasn't supposed to, do we leave? That's what I'm trying to ask you. If, if you're going to if you're going to put America's future in the region, fighting terror and trying to keep Pakistan from going the wrong way, on the outcome of some goat herder voting in these outskirts of Kabul, then we don't need a president. We'll just sit back and let the Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan, so decide we, our policy. So, so, so let me get the, the final word here, Michael. Is it so? No matter what happens with the Afghan people, mm -hmm. damn it, the United States is going in there because we think that if we're not there, we're going to get hit again. That's basically no, where just, you are. 
what I'm saying is this points out the nonsense of saying our strategy in the region depends on the outcome of a local election okay. and which of one of two candidates. All right, I just want someone to answer the question for me. What's the well, wrong outcome? Because you're not outcome, the host. So we'll you're know. just supposed to give us a take. I'll ask the questions. Good to have you with us tonight, Michael. No